You know, we've seen a lot of bad leadership in government, man, both Republican and Democrat. Basically, every single government in the history of mankind, if we're being honest. And we've seen cities destroy themselves before. We've watched Baltimore destroy itself. We've watched Los Angeles destroy itself. We've watched Chicago destroy negative record after negative record after negative record. And finally, its citizens are starting to revolt. Man, we've seen a lot, right? But I don't think we've ever seen something quite like what we're watching in New York State right now. From the governor on down. And this is a governor that has welcomed criminal migrants, basically co-signed crime with bad decision after bad decision. And now that all of her bad decisions are finally coming due, I'm surprised it took so long, but now that they're finally coming due, she puts the freaking army on the subway for security, pats herself on the back and moves on with her day. And really, I mean, just look at the crime fighting duo that is Letitia James and Kathy Hochul. I don't think there has ever been a more incompetent state apparatus in the entire history of this country. And this is where we're at, man. We've got a New York government that has manipulated bail laws to basically let criminals roam free, manipulated theft statutes to literally normalize the theft of anything less than $1,000, and many, many other leftist fantasy policies that they've enacted. And all that together has let crime get so bad for the average citizen in one of the most beautiful and amazing and vibrant cities in the world. It's gotten so bad there that the army needs to be involved to protect them. All while they've literally made it their mission to sue Donald Trump for a bogus victimless crime and have another one of the geniuses, Alvin Bragg, prosecute him for an eight-year-old misdemeanor that he magically turned into 34 new felonies. I mean, this is where we're at. And this, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not paying attention, is just another example of you get what you vote for. And unfortunately, it appears what New York has voted for is more dead cops, which brings me to the most recent thing that Kathy Hochul, Letitia James, and Alvin Bragg, along with Mayor Eric Adams, what they all have in common. They asked Officer Diller's widow if they could speak at the funeral and turn it into some progressive freaking sideshow, man. The very people that may as well have pulled the trigger themselves thought that they could play politics on the grave that they put the guy in, you know? And they did. When they allowed a 21-time offender to wander around the city with an illegal gun, they did this. And the city has had enough. And guys, New York, I think it's a very, very special place. And they have gone through a lot. They have withstood a lot. But something tells me, man, I have a feeling that Officer Diller's death is going to put the place over the edge. They believe that blood is on their government's hands. A brand new video shows New York Governor Kathy Hochul getting an earful as she was leaving the wake for murdered NYPD officer Jonathan Diller, this over in Massapequa. A source tells me this happened moments after Hochul refused to abide by the family's wishes. They would do an open cast and viewing, and she did not want to wait on the outside. So she came in while they were closing the casket. As she stormed in, they just couldn't stop her. I'm told that family members let her have it when she got there, saying, quote, his blood is on your hands. When Hoku got outside, that's when another family member confronted her, telling her that the governor, the, telling the governor that the governor laws need to change because that's the reason why Officer Diller is dead tonight. Hoku wasn't the only one approached at the wake. Mayor Eric Adams and D.A. Alvin Bragg were both confronted directly, this time by Officer Diller's wife, the source tells me she let them have it, too, telling them the same thing that was told to Hochul. His blood is on your hands. I understand that Bragg kept quiet, and for a second it looked like Adams was going to engage. He realized he was heavily outnumbered, and a politician thought better of it and left. The most shocking part about all this is that despite the fact that none of these leaders were welcomed at the wake, I have now learned tonight from a source that Kathy Hochul, the governor, asked to speak at tomorrow's funeral at St. Rose. So did hold on to something tight. A.G. Letitia James, both were rejected by the family. Just look at how angry the big guy is, man. I'll, I'll give the governor some credit for standing there and just taking it. And I got to wonder what she was thinking, man. I wonder if she actually feels responsible. My gut tells me that these kind of people... You know, they may grieve in a way when these kind of things happen, when bad things happen, but I don't think they actually feel any genuine responsibility. I, I just don't think that that's how they're wired. I, ho I hope I'm wrong, but I just don't think that's how they're wired. I do not think they, they feel any kind of responsibility or remorse. And really, when you look at how they treat law enforcement, the way they've demonized and demagogued them whenever they can, the way they have really 
destroyed their ability to be effective. I mean, with the bail laws and the manipulated statutes, everything they've done tells me that they do not respect police officers until one ends up dead. And that's when they show up. And that's when they pretend, really. And just listen to Officer Diller's widow. This is a very, very strong woman whose life is never, ever, ever going to be the same. And she's the one who told all these political vultures to pound sand. Just listen to her. It's hard to imagine how long I have to wait to see Jonathan again. When the doors to heaven open for me one day, I hope to see Jonathan standing there looking at me just like he did on our wedding day. My husband died a hero, but he also lived as one. Our world will never be the same, but I know I speak for everyone when I say I could not be more proud of him. It's been two years and two months since Detective Rivera and Detective Mora made the ultimate sacrifice just like my husband, Jonathan Diller. Dominique Rivera stood in front of all the elected officials present today pleading for change. That change never came. And now my son will grow up without his father. I will grow old without my husband. And his parents have to say goodbye to their child. How many more police officers and how many more families need to make the ultimate sacrifice before we start protecting them? I don't wish this kind of pain on anyone. Jonathan lived his life doing good for people, and it's now time for people to do good for all the officers he represents. Yeah, that, that's tough to watch, man. I mean, what can you even add to that, right? You got to feel for these families, and really, you got to pray for every single officer that is still stuck doing that job. Because the truth is, man, that change is never coming. You're going to keep burying brave young heroes, and their families are going to keep begging for change, and those bloodthirsty, power-hungry, tone-deaf politicians are going to keep trying to show up for their photo op. It will never change until all of us, in literally every single one of our cities, man, we got to start holding elected representatives responsible for public safety. And that all starts, public safety, man, it all starts with well-respected, well-protected police officers. If we don't have safe cops, we don't have safe communities. If we don't have safe communities, we don't have safe families. And if we don't have safe families... We don't have anything, man. And Mrs. Diller, man, she's absolutely right. It is time for people to start doing good for all of the officers her husband represents. And, you know, this compassionate, soft on crime, hard on political rivals act, that's not helping anybody, man. But anyway, that's just my take, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't already, be a part of our growth. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, share the channel. I'll see you in the next.